this video will show you how to factor bigger polynomials. But to start factoring bigger polynomials, we have to see how we multiply to get to bigger polynomials. The only way to undo multiplication is to do the multiplication. So here is two binomials, x squared plus 3 times 2x minus 5. Notice that they're not both linear. That's going to make a difference. Notice that we've got this x squared here. So since we're starting with this x squared, when we distribute, one way, instead of distributing it the way we usually FOIL, which is distribute to the 2x and the negative 5 separately, think about distributing the x squared to the whole thing, 2x minus 5, and then distributing the 3 to that whole thing, and adding them together. If you think about the distributing that way, then you'll see the next step, which would be to distribute the x squared to its um, other factor, x squared, sorry, 2x to the third. So we're multiplying x squared times 2x minus 5x squared and distributing the 3 to the factor that it's being multiplied by, 6x minus 15. You see we end up with a cubic polynomial. Cubic is a fancy word for starts with a cube. That's the highest degree in there. And what I want you to notice is that when we see the finished product, you can see the two GCFs in each little grouping here. So if you look at the first part of this cubic, you can see the x squared. You can see the x squared in here that gets distributed out. And in the 6x minus 15, you can see the 3 in that also. This is just all to set up what we're going to do in the next problem, which is go in the other direction. We're going to start with a cubic polynomial and factor it back to the two binomials. So this method is called grouping. The idea behind grouping is to look for a GCF. And you should always look for a GCF in the whole thing first. Say, hmm, well, I've got 4 and a 12, but I don't have that in every term. So there's no GCF here. There's x, 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 but no x in that one. So no GCF. So our next step is going to be to split our terms into groups. Now, usually it won't be that important which terms you group together. I will normally just group the first terms together and the second two, the, the second pair of terms, I'll group them together. What I do want you to notice is that there's always going to be a, um, a plus sign in between them. Had this been a minus 3x, I would have kept the negative along with the 3. It wasn't in this case, so I'll erase that but you always want to put a plus sign between those two groups of terms. And if there's a minus sign in this spot, it gets kept with the three in the parentheses. Okay, now that we've done that, our next step, our next step is going to be to factor each group separately. <coughs> Now, there'll be a GCF in each group, or if there is no GCF in each group, then we can't factor this, but we will try to factor out a GCF from each group. So this is just like when I looked at here, you know, looking at this group, I can see the GCF in just that group as the x squared. Well, that's what we're going to be doing here. In fact, it's the same exact GCF. We'll take the x squared out. We'll undistribute that x squared, which leaves us with x minus 4. And from the second group, we can see the 3, that's the GCF in the 3x minus 12, so I will undistribute the 3. What needs to happen in order for this to work is I need to see the same x minus 4 factor in both groups. If those two things are not the same, then this doesn't work, and I can't factor this.
uh, polynomial by grouping. But if it does work, our last step is to undistribute the common factor. Because that's what x minus 4 is now. It's a common factor. Just like in the problem before, when we multiplied x squared plus 3 times 2x minus 5, we distributed the x squared to the 2x minus 5. We distributed the 3 to the 2x minus 5. That meant that the 2x minus 5 itself was a common factor. Well, so we're just undoing that now. We are going to undistribute the x minus 4. So we're going to pull the x minus 4 away from the x squared, and we're going to pull it away from the 3, and that leaves us with our factors. Well, I'll do a couple of examples to help you with this. So our first step, I'm going to group these together. When everything's addition, I just really can just put parentheses around that, just do my grouping. And then I'm going to pull a common factor out of each group separately. So from the first group, I can pull out an x cubed, leaving me with x squared plus 2. And from the second group, I can pull out a 5, leaving me with x squared plus 2. Again, it's this common x squared plus 2 that I need to see in both cases. If that's not the same thing, we've got trouble. But it is the same thing, so I'm going to undistribute that x squared plus 2 from the x cubed plus 5. And those are my factors. Notice how this next one does have that minus sign that I was talking about before. That does make it a tiny bit trickier. So when we do our grouping, we're just going to want to make sure that we separate our groups by addition. And if there's a minus sign in front of this third term here, I'm going to include that in the second grouping. Once I've set that up the right way, everything else will work the same. I can factor out the GCF here, I see a 5x squared that I can undistribute from the 15x cubed and the 5x squared. And negative 6x minus 2, because I want this to be positive, I'm going to pull the negative sign out from the 6 along with the GCF of 2. So I'm actually going to pull out a negative 2, which leaves me with 3x. And because I'm pulling a negative 2 out of that, plus 1. And so, just like we needed, the 3x plus 1 and the 3x plus 1, they are common factors, so I can undistribute the 3x plus 1 from the 5x squared and the negative 2. And that's factored.